And last but not least, I'd like to invite uh, <laughs> Deirdre Chisholm and uh, Carrie Kitzel from the Norfolk Arts Center. Well, I'm really happy to say that um, I don't have to stand up here for too long because you could probably just see my eyebrows. And <laughs> I have, um, I am uh, Deirdre Chisholm from the Norfolk Arts Centre, and I'm very pleased to um, introduce my colleague, Carrie Kitzel. Um, like many very small museums and art galleries these days, we are two full-time staff, and we split the responsibilities of the collection, care, and management. Um, and um, I have, since Carrie arrived two years ago in 2013, um, have been collaborating more widely um, with Carrie, who's a collection specialist, and um, I have to, I, I have to back up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna just hopefully, oops, that one, oops, I knew I'd press the wrong one, Carrie. So there we are, smiling, and uh, we were smiling before reorg, and we're still smiling. So we know that we can carry forward. Um, we are a first and foremost a public art gallery in a national historic site and um, uh, in 2003 um, the former Linwood Art Center became part of the um, Norfolk County which, it, which is a relatively new municipality heritage and culture division and um, uh, we are embracing reorg because as of this year, um, fast forward 2015, we are now able to start to resume full occupancy of a building. So that's approximately 70 or 7,000 square feet. We presently um, are, we have a partnering department from Norfolk County that occupies approximately 40% of our space. Um, I will not tell their story because some of you know about their story and um, they are going to be relocated uh, sometime this spring to a new um, building uh, in Simcoe. So um, uh, with these sort of ideas in mind, we're also, of the six organizations, our primary focus is, on, uh, is collecting visual arts. We have different types of challenges which we'll, um, Carrie will go through um, in um, some of our uh, planning. And every once in a while, as I watched my colleagues present, I think, boy, I'm sure glad I don't have those issues. Um, but I have other issues, and, um, which is, is fun. Um, we have um, a, an exhibition cycle of approximately six to eight exhibitions per year that, um, that um, we change. Uh, you know, sort of, every, uh, we have about six to eight, every, every six to eight weeks. I don't know why that number is so comfortable, but it does, we try to match our cycle um, with some of the criteria of the Ontario Arts Council. Um, at present, um, we receive project funding from the Ontario Arts Council. We are not receiving operating funds. Um, we are, however, um, a full member of the um, municipality, so we are municipally owned and municipally operated. So we do receive an operating Operating budget from the from Norfolk County, as well uh, in terms of matching funding for our MAP grant, we have an we have a capital budget that has allowed us to proceed with um, the development of these ideas. Um, I'm going to step back for a second, and Carrie's going to tell you the story of our collection at present. Um, she did the condition report, and um, she has an overview of some of the um, statistics. It's probably the first time I've been able to speak or I've been able to look at our collection in terms of statistics, and this has been a very positive outcome of the reorg assignment that uh, we've been working with over the last couple of months, and we believe that numbers speak very very well to our political advisors. Um, when they hear things broken down into numerical elements, um, it proves to them that arts people can do math. So. <laughs> uh, I'm probably okay. Um, okay, so we have, our collection is quite a bit smaller than that of our colleagues. It's just over 800 works of um, visual art of regional, local, and national significance. Um, through our collections analysis, um, we always knew we had a lot of works on paper, but 
Um, through the analysis, we found that we 75% of the collection is, in fact, works on paper, um, drawings and um, prints and the like. About 20% are paintings, 4% sculptures, and we have a very small collection of um, textiles. For a small rural art center, um, we do have some significant works in our permanent collection including a work called Mayday by Alex Colville, which is currently part of a touring exhibition um, that is actually set to open at the National Gallery um, in April. And um, we couldn't have timed it better. Uh, Deirdre and I joke that, that Colville is going to be coming home to a much um, nicer environment than the one it left. Um, we also have a work by William Kurlick, and we have a strong collection of works by um, Tom Hodgson, uh, who was a member of the Painters 11 and a very close friend of the first director curator, so uh, we were the beneficiaries of that friendship. Um, unfortunately, some of the Hodgsons are also on our um, conservation priority list, um, so coming to that understanding was also, I think, um, a good outcome of Reorg. Oh, so we have three main display areas. Um, on the second floor, we have um, two exhibition spaces that are, um, as you can see, in heritage rooms. Um, on the right, the small exhibition space in the summer, um, that becomes our collections office. So it's the four months out of the year where um, myself and a collections assistant have a dedicated space to inventory and condition report on and um, process works. And then we have a small gallery uh, on the main floor as well. Um, here are some exterior images. Um, we are at a National Historic Site. The building was um, constructed in 1851 um, by Duncan Campbell. So there are some, um, you know, issues with the integrity of the structure that go along with being part of a, a National Historic Site. Um, on the bottom picture there, you can see the fire escape. Um, that fire escape door actually leads to our collections room. Our collections room is on the second floor. Um, okay, so our storage before uh, reorg. Um, so what we have here on the left, uh, everything in blue, uh, that's our collections furniture right now and everything that's pink is non-collection so that includes um, packing material, AV equipment, special event supplies, a small collection of artworks that we um, suspect are um, you know artworks that are remaindered from a past art rental program. Um, they're really mystery works in most cases we have no idea who the artists are um, so they're disposal, I guess, is kind of a big question mark. We don't know what to do with them. Um, okay, I won't keep you too long on this because... Uh, okay, so this is our storage area before um, reorganization. Um, it might not look so bad, <laughs> or it might not look quite as crowded as some of the other images that we've seen today. Um, but our problem is really that um, it's a small space. It's um, about 18 feet wide and 31 feet in length. Um, and we have canvases like the large blue canvas uh, here. Um, that's at least 10 feet in length. We have canvas canvases that are 8 to 10 feet in length. So navigating around um, all the furniture, um, the sculptures on the floor, pedestals, and our lifetime supply of bubble wrap there um, can be a real challenge. Um, we also have these really old light fixtures. Um, and um, yeah, again, just like navigating some of our larger artworks without um, hitting our lighting fixtures is um, another problem that we have. And as you can see um, on the right, where our, our screen racks are located, um, they parallel our compact shelving system. So it creates some problems um, as well when you want to remove the larger artworks from, um, from the screen rack um, system. And there's just a lot of maneuvering and uh, negotiation that has to go on. Um, 
this uh, the large blue canvas uh, used to sit on the screen racks and it was a priority for me to get it off of that because I was tired of hitting my shin on it and uh, uh, bruising myself. Uh, okay, and yeah, some of our, our storage furniture is just falling apart. It's, you know, exposed screws and wood. Um, okay, so the outcomes of our self-evaluation were, I think, pretty good. Like, we, we thought they would be worse, actually. And this is an average. I did it, Deirdre did it, and our collections assistant at the time did it. So it was kind of interesting to see those three perspectives um, come together. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in the management area. That's a, a real failing. I shouldn't say it's pretty good, but I guess it's better than we, were, we thought. Um, so some of our storage info. So 58% of our floor space is occupied. We really don't have any more space, really much more space for extra storage units. Um, there's potential for us to build up um, and to uh, maybe add some shelves, adjust our shelves and our compact units um, to add some space there. But in terms of actually adding new shelving units or um, racks, we, we don't have much room to maneuver. Uh, about 66%, we're at 66% unit, full, unit fullness, 75% um, room height usage, and overall our fullness is about um, 60%. Um, but again, it's variable. Like, um, could we have room? We realized quite quickly that we have room to grow our collection of works on paper. Um, large scale canvases or sculptures, not so much because we just um, don't have the space to accommodate that. Um, our collection, over the last two years, we've gone to um, you know, great lengths to inventory, digitize, and um, condition report on collection. And that has been the primary objective our, of our collection assistant, assistant over the last two summers. So we can say, you know, confidently that 95% of the collection has been inventoried and accessioned, and um, about 50% of that has been added to our past perfect database. Um, so on that end, we've made a lot of progress. Um, about 50% of the objects, objects can be retrieved within three minutes. Even though on our workbook, we noted that 100% could be found within three minutes by Deirdre or myself, because we just, because of institutional memory, we know where they are. Um, a collections assistant would never be able to find most of the artworks in three minutes. But the actual retrieval is more of an issue um, I didn't mention it when we were on the slide, but about 50% of our canvases are stacked on the floor. Some of them are maybe stacked seven paintings deep, seven canvases deep. Um, so the, but by the time you move the sculptures, move everything around it to get to a painting that's way at the back, um, it's, you know, it, you're looking at something that's more like 10 to 20 minutes and you need four people to do it. Um, so when we, when we stacked the paintings like that two summers ago, it took four people, and they've never been moved since because it's too much of a pain. Um, so some of our main issues are that we have no collection, no location system. So it's something we want to finalize by the end of reorg. Temperature and humidity control. <laughs> so as you can see, our... Um, graphs are pretty um, sporadic. <laughs> we have some fluctuation issues. We're working closely with our facilities department to address this issue and to look for ways to um, improve uh, the control of the space. And uh, as I already mentioned, our floor space usage is really at capacity. Some of the main issues with the building, um, the envelope in general, well, sound does provide many access points for pests and drafts, or as I like Melissa's uh, term, unbuffered air. Um, so in the, the top slide there, we can see the remnants of probably a wasp's nest that's um, between our windows and an ill-fitting screen. And last summer, we actually had a problem with 
um, wasps in um, the exhibition um, spaces and our offices kind of throughout the building. Uh, we have a lot of tight corners and clutter that create navigational headaches um, and no fire suppression system, as, as many of our colleagues have noted. And you can see in the bottom picture that um, there's a nice shaft of light coming in under the door, and that's pretty typical for our exterior doors, unfortunately. Um, so in terms of our furniture and uh, small equipment issues, um, so 75% of our uh, collection is works, of, works on paper, but we have inadequate storage for it. Um, so Deirdre and I have really been preoccupied with getting the canvases off the floor and onto uh, mobile screen racks. And this is still our main priority with um, Reorg and the majority of our MAP grant will be going towards the purchase of um, a mobile screen rack system that can accommodate all of our works on canvas. Um, but in doing this section of the condition report, it also became abundantly clear that we don't have adequate storage for our works on paper. Um, and as this is comprises the largest percentage of our collection, um, it needs to be to be a priority, um, the adequate storage. Uh, yes, so our, our current screen racks only accommodate 50% of our works on canvas. Um, there you can see how everything's just stacked up, um, in some cases, right to the ceiling. And uh, we have a limit, a small number of large sculptural works too, um, but these are also problematic. Some of them are really heavy. Some of them, because of the materials they're made out of, um, crumble if they're um, moved too often. Um, so we also plan to, um, to construct mobile platforms with handles um, for each individual work so that they're easy to move into exhi exhibition spaces or um, just around the storage room. Uh, yeah, oh, oh no, okay. Okay, so yes, our management issues, no emergency plan. Um, of course, Deirdre and I know that in the event of a disaster, the Colville is the first work to go, and then the Curlock is the second work to go, but um, it doesn't help just us knowing that. And where do they go after they leave the storage room? We don't know. So <laughs> this is also, we've known this has been, we've known this has been a priority for some time, but you know, this just highlights the need for it. Um, again, so we have no implementation procedure for new acquisitions. So while we have a, sl a strong collections mandate, and I have to say our acquisition committee over the last 40 years has been really great in sticking to it, we really don't have a lot in the collection that doesn't belong there, that, isn't, that, that doesn't correspond to the mandate or that needs to be deaccessioned. Um, but when it comes to the actual processing of the acquisitions, um, this is a major problem for us and um, we have a lot of unfinished uh, paperwork and um, unaccessioned or you know, kind of unfinished accessioned records because of this. And it lead, just leads to a documentation backlog. Uh, yeah, so that's essentially our third point. It's not just with acquisitions, it's with deaccessioning, incoming and outgoing loans. Essentially, all of our policies are un unfinished. Um, this picture here is just a kind of an example of a tight corners situation. So this is actually the hallway that leads into our collections room. Um, so it's a pretty uh, tight, tight corner to navigate around, and we've always kind of wondered how, how did they get that 10-foot canvas in there? And I guess we're going to find out this summer. Um, so it takes, uh, you know, you have to train staff and a lot of careful maneuver maneuvering. Um, so our urgent uh, priorities, our first uh, issues, are to move works from the floor to the appropriate furniture. This has been a long-standing priority of ours is to get those canvases off the floor, get those sculptures off the floor, um, and just to um, create more floor space um, for us. Uh, the creation of a location system to tie works to the past perfect database. Uh, we 
that by the end of the summer, 100% of the collection will be entered into the database and it would be nice if those included the locations in the storage room. Uh, the relocation of non-collections items, just because we really, in such a small space, we really don't have room for works um, that don't belong there or for TVs and VCRs. And then just the completions of our uh, collections policies, basically. So that's everything. <laughs>